Today on the Grandland Video Blog, Justice League of America. Shrapnel. Supergirl. And the zombies that ate the world. Welcome to the Grandland Video Blog for books that came out on February. Oh, we just did this, didn't we? February 18th, 2009. As always, I'm Craig, your host. This is part two of a three part series this week. We're going to talk about some DC and some indie books. Part one and part three are both going to have Marvel books. Part one is going to have your non X Men stuff. Part three is going to have your X Men stuff. So if you're interested in watching those, I'm sure you can find them wherever you're watching this video to the left, to the right, to the up, to the down, wherever they are in, uh, in spatial accordance to me on the interwebs. First up, Justice League of America, number 30. Dwayne McDuffie is back to finish telling our Milestone Meets the JLA story uh, after a very lackluster fill-in Faces of Evil story that really didn't go anywhere. Although I've seen the solicit, and supposedly this story's not over, but this sure feels like an ending, and the next issue is supposedly going to deal with the fallout from Final Crisis. So how these stories are fitting together with the fallout from Final Crisis, unless McDuffie is going to tell a series of arcs with the Milestone characters, that I guess that's possible. Seems kind of strange, but we've got all these just choppy other books going in the middle. You know, a, a story, a single issue story about the Holy Trinity leaving the Justice League after Final Crisis, or you know, the one part faces of evil that I end up throwing across the room in that direction. Uh, this wraps it up fairly well, and it wraps it up a little quicker than I expected because, again, I'm brainwashed to think in six-issue story arcs because I'm a modern comic reader. We get four parts, I'd say three parts, really, because the face of evil doesn't count. A three-part story that goes in an interesting direction, sets up some things, and then they take off. And, again, you know, we'll see the single issue. I, I really, each issue is okay. Ed Bennis, of course, can't hit a deadline, so we've got fill-in artists all over, but the fill-in artists are okay as well, so that's at least acceptable. Dwayne McDuffie's writing is always top-notch. That's, that's why he's just so good at you know, writing like the Justice League cartoon, why he finally got the Justice League gig and it was great, why he was good on the Fantastic Four, you know, all of the great writing jobs he's had over the years. Just an excellent writer, and it's just the direction is really where I get stuck. Each individual issue, you know, at least in the good ones, I'm feeling, all right, this is a good issue of Justice League. It's really fun to be reading Justice League again. But then I start pondering the direction of this. And, and it probably I'm more prone to it because I have to actually order the books and figure out whether I'm going to sell them or not. Uh, a wise man, uh, Rocky from Goldmine, used to tell me, uh, it's not like ordering peanut butter at a grocery store. It's like one month peanut butter will be peanut butter, and the next month peanut butter will have a Rob Liefeld label, and then the next month it'll be jelly in the peanut butter jar, and then the next month it'll be peanut butter and jelly swirled together like the kids like. And then the next month it'll be pickled herring that looks like peanut butter, and then the next month it'll go back to peanut butter. That's what comics are, and it's really that... Uh, I'm, I'm searching for a word there. It's just uneven. It's just unreliable. And... If you can't put a reliability on a title, especially a title like Justice League of America that's been around for years, there's a problem at editorial. But we've already talked about that, haven't we? So again, a good single issue within a larger framework of trouble in the DC Universe. Moving on to happier areas, Shrapnel by Radical Comics, number two. This, again, only $3, really high quality book and a really fun story. You see uh, the plot twist of number one come into play, which we thought was eventually going to come into play, but I think they jumped it a little faster, which, which is nice. It's, it means they've got more planned. They don't have to rely on that one plot twist and, and teasing that plot twist. So, again, it's really fun. It's kind of a Starship Trooper space st sci-fi story, you know, with some nice politics involved. Very good book. The art, again, like all radical books, is just... It's there, and you drool, and it's just great. And the pages are high quality, so you can wipe your drool off afterwards. And it's only, th it's only three bucks. It's really one of the best companies, the best new companies around right now. you got to check it out if you're into the sci-fi, Starship Troopers type of feel. Space Marines. If you're into Space Marines as a genre, you, you can't miss this book. 
back to the DC Universe, if I must. Supergirl, number 38. Uh, a note about these origins and omens. It's, they're kind of getting tiring. In some areas, okay, the first one, Adventure Comics Zero, that had a reason to be there. Let's tell a story about Black Lanterns. You know, the one in, uh, was it Green Lantern? Green Lantern Core. Green Lantern Core we reviewed. The origins and omens story over there, it was, that was good, you know, and that fit because it's, they're all supposedly going to Blackest Night, but you can't just keep teasing, you know, certain characters. Uh, I am the rogue uh, watcher or whatever they're called, the rogue guardian, and I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, random character acts like Supergirl here. Does this really have anything to do with The Blackest Night? Does this really have anything to do, you know, it basically is a backup story that establishes exactly what happened in this book. Uh, it says, okay, Supergirl's torn between going to Earth and going to New Krypton. We already knew that from reading the main story, so we didn't need a backup story to tell us that. It's kind of shoehorned in a lot of those places. Uh, in the Su Who is Superwoman mystery, however, we get some nice more clues, and it's very interesting. Again, no complaints against Sterling Gates and Jamal Eigel, and I'm assuming Keith Champagne. I, I don't think there's anybody else with the last name of Champagne working at DC right now. Those three guys are doing a great job here. It's still an excellent book. It fits... You know, like, like you talk about the X-Men books, you used to talk about Avengers and West Coast Avengers being the Avengers titles, you know, the various Spider-Man books when there was three or four Spider-Man titles as being a Spider-Man family or, you know, the X-Men family. This is part of the Superman family, and it's rightfully so. It's where it belongs, really. It fits so well with what's going on in action and with Superman, and it's very nice to see that direction at DC. You know, at least somebody is taking that direction to make the books go in a, in a, in a organized course. Uh, excellent stuff. Really, really pleasing, other than the Origins and Omens rant aside. Lastly, very, very importantly, the zombies that ate the world. I can't get over this title. I met Guy Davis uh, a couple years ago, and I asked him to draw me a uh, Death of Captain America cover. He did an amazing job, all for free, top-notch guy. He's been working on Hellboy and stuff for, for Dark Horse for years. Here he does uh, a book for Devil's Due. It's an eight-issue miniseries, which I think is kind of an interesting uh, number, especially when you get in here and it's divided into two stories. And again... In a classic sense, we don't put any price tag on this, so it's really tough for me to recommend it. Three fifty, but it is mature readers uh, because it's zombies, and it is really fun. I thought it was a four dollar book because it feels thicker, but three fifty is good. Jerry Frizen is writing it. I have no idea who that is. It's got a nice call out from George Romero on the cover. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will appear in comic books. The zombies that ate the world is a terrific series. Judging from the first issue, I have to agree. Obviously, zombies are overdone in comic books right now, so to get a really nice idea going, such as zombies exist next to normal humans, and they're just generally lucid, and they just kind of exist. They're not trying to kill the humans. The humans aren't running away from them. I mean, there's some unfortunate incidents now and then, but there's, you know, the uh, post-life, or the unliving, I think is what they're called in this book. It's really fun story about the adventures of characters in this setting. It's a wacky setting, and you see things happen from that setting, like uh, what would happen if this character existed, or that character existed? How would, how would they go about dealing with this? And that's what makes this a really intriguing concept. Uh, and Guy Davis's art really pays it off really well. It looks really nice. It's really high quality. I mean, it's a Devil's Due book. They're not known for shirking on quality in their books. Uh, it's really well done. They got a nice name value behind it. I'm afraid that, especially starting it at Z, Zombies, it's just going to end up with all of the other zombie books at the bottom right corner of your retailer's wall. This one really stands out. This is not Zombie Tales or Zombie King or Zombie Lord or, you know, uh, Zombie House of Mystery or whatever, <laughs> whatever the, the zombie books are. There's enough of them. There's too many of them. And they're all just an easy way to go after Walking Dead. But this is a, a quality book that stands out from the pack, and I hope that it really catches fire because it does deserve more attention than just being part of the zombie genre. So check it out if you get a chance. It is only three fifty. You get two really fun stories, and it's going to be probably a really good eight-issue miniseries to see where it goes from here. Definitely high recommendation on that one. That's it for this installment. We'll see you in part three in just a second.